Hello plant people, how are you guys doing today? If you're new around here, my name's Ashley and I'm a soil scientist on this channel. I like to take that science and apply it to all things plants. And in today's video, we're talking about variegated monsteras at box stores. <laughs> Do you ever make a video? Or if you're like online in general, in the online world, and you type something out or a comment and you just while you're typing it, while you're making it, while you're just putting it all together, you think to yourself, this is gonna deliver me a lot of hate. I'm gonna get a lot of dislikes here. I'm gonna get I'm gonna get basted a bit. That's how I feel about this video. I'm gonna get basted and I'm I'm okay with that because I'm a small channel and uh, I've got literally nothing to lose. So let's just jump right into my thoughts on uh, box store variegated monsteras. And there's a few people who have been able to pick these buttes up. And while I say what I'm going to say in this video that's gonna trigger a lot of people, I do wanna preface this with, I may be wrong. I don't know because I haven't seen one in a store and I haven't seen the actual plants that people own. Now, if you have a variegated box store plant, please send me a photo of it. I'm on Instagram, I'm on Facebook. Um, I have an email in my about section on my YouTube channel. Please send me a photo, a video of the plant. What I wanna see in particular is the actual so you have your petiole off your rhizome, and then we have our, our stem that turns into our leaf. What I want is I want not the leaf, I don't care about the leaf, I care about the actual stem, the petiole portion down to the stem, the nodes, and then down the nodes to the base of the plant. And let's just get into why I want that photo because I actually be interested to know what's going on with these plants. I will right off the bat say buyer beware variegated box store monstera plants. It may not be variegated. It may not be a spontaneous variegation and it most definitely is not a genetic variegation in any sort. I think it's actually mosaic virus. And there's a reason why I think it's mosaic virus. My conspiracy theory is that these plants are always found at a Home Depot. They're found in American Home Depots and they're found in Canadian Home Depots. Home Depot gets their plants from the same place, from the same nurseries. You can almost guarantee you it. They're coming out of the same spot. And because of that, I know that people who run nurseries aren't idiots. People who run nurseries are plant people just like us. And they're not going to let a variegated Monstera walk out of their building when they know that variegated monsters are going for three to five hundred dollars Canadian in the world of plants right now, they're going to keep that variegated monstera. They're going to grow the variegated monstera and they're going to propagate it and make big bucks off of it. Which makes me think that because these nurseries aren't idiots, that they're probably not variegated and that it's actually something called mosaic virus and the only way for me to tell if it's variegated or actual uh, mosaic virus is to see that petiole stem node internode area i have no other way of seeing it but all i've ever seen photos of or videos of is the actual leaves so i don't know it's hard to tell but let's get into what mosaic virus is and how you can tell if you have it just in your natural plant collection or if the monster you received has it. So what is mosaic virus? It's a parasitic virus that attacks on a cellular level until it kills. And the name comes from its very unique mosaic look. And you can actually Google mosaic virus and it brings up photos of beautifully variegated monsteras. It is actually also common on cucumbers and tomatoes. So if it is, is in a Home Depot and there's cucumbers and tomatoes or the greenhouse had cucumbers and tomatoes, then there's a high likelihood that it's getting transferred plant to plant. The virus itself tends to hitchhike on pests. So it's usually on little insects such as aphids and grasshoppers, anything that has any sort of chomper on it. 
once it hitchhikes a ride and comes into contact with a host plant and the host plant is nibbled on, it is officially infected. What will happen is it will eventually spread and as it spreads throughout the entire plant, it will ultimately kill the plant. The speed in which it kills the plant is completely based on the dosage the plant has received. So one aphid versus 10 aphids, that's what your determining factor is. Well, I actually looked up a list of critters that can spread this virus, whether that be in the nursery, in the Home Depots themselves, or any box store for that matter, themselves or within your plant collection and why you need to isolate the plant till you can determine if it's mosaic virus or variegated. So the list of insects is <coughs> aphids, grasshoppers, beetles, flies, mites, fungus, nematodes, roundworms, direct contact with another plant or person, pollen, seeds, soil, and pots. So you can see my hesitation when it comes to this stuff spreading somehow throughout the entire plant system of a nursery, especially if there's one nursery in particular that has it. So the unfortunate tale of this parasitic virus is that there's no cure for it. There's zero because it attacks on a cellular level. There's no spray. There's no trimming of the plant. It is toast. If you see it and it's presenting itself, the plant in its entirety is done. Now, because I love you guys so much, I literally scoured the internet for some sort of a cure. And there was one very obscure, not at all scientifically tested. It was some random person on the internet that said aspirin. So you can Google that. Uh, you have nothing to lose ultimately if you if you do have mosaic virus you've got nothing to lose so you could try it because the plant is a goner anyways but what I advise doing if you have this plant and you're not sure if it's variegated or if it's mosaic virus just you need to isolate it in a way that like it can't just be in another room because if there's aphids or anything that's going through the door under the door over the door it's not good enough you need to put it in a grow tent you've got to completely isolate this thing any tools you use on that plant you cannot use on another plant at all there's you just you cannot do it unless you're fully sterilizing them and just wait and see what happens if your plant doesn't show any decline, as long as you're getting lots of new growth, and if the new growth in particular is variegated, then you probably actually have a variegated Monstera. You probably actually have a variegated plant. If the new growth isn't variegated, if you don't have that variegation line, especially on the inner node, node area, and it's just on the old growth, then there is some cause for concern. This is just my theory. And this is total conspiracy theory possibly because my, in my mind, these nurseries aren't gonna let a big buck plant like that leave. And spontaneous variegation where I could get into kind of how that works, how you could induce that, all that stuff. It, it starts in the meristematic tissue of the plant. It happens in the actual node of the plant as to whether or not a plant's gonna decide to variegate or not. And there are ways you can induce it, but the idea of spontaneous variegation in transport or in a box store after it's left the nursery is very, very low. And the reason being is that the plant is so stressed out that it's not, it usually has to do with light and uh, even chemicals can do it. But yeah, I just, I don't know. If you have one, please send me a photo. And like I said, I know this video is going to piss off some people. people some people are going to get mad and they're going to say that, no, I have a variegated monster. And you very well could. I'm not saying you don't. I'm just saying use caution. It could be mosaic virus. That's just me though. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to hit that thumbs up button. Hit the subscribe button. Let me know in the comments below what you think it is. Do you think it's variation or do you think it's the mosaic virus? I don't know what to think. I 
think that there's plant people out there that would be able to tell um if they've seen one in a home depot they'd be like oh shit that is mosaic virus um yeah but then there's people out there that are plant people that may not know that that even exists the only reason i know it exists is because i know it exists with cucumbers and tomatoes that's how i know it exists but it can be transferred to other plants and because there's tomatoes and cucumbers in home depots it makes me think that there's a potential that those plants brushed up against each other or there's just the bug inhabiting that area of the store you know went over and nibbled on a monstera plant but i digress i don't know thumbs up or thumbs down the video either way it helps and i will talk to you guys next time bye